Okay? Yeah. My name is Gilbert Trujillo. I was born in San Pedro, California in 1928. My father was Teofilo R. Trujillo, born in the Trujillo Adobe in what is now Riverside in the year 1886. My father, or his father, was, was my grandfather's Lorenzo Trujillo, who was the son of my great-grandfather, Lorenzo Trujillo, who came to what is now the Riverside area in the 1830s or 1840s. My grandfather married Teresa Maria Atencio. They had five children out of that marriage, four boys and one girl. The four boys were named Andronico Trujillo, Esquipula Trujillo, Antonio Trujillo, and my father, Teofilo Trujillo. They had one daughter named Esther, who was deceased prior to my knowing her. My father told me he was born in the Trujillo Adobe, in La Placita de los Trujillos, here in what is now Riverside. My father attended school in Riverside and went on to serve in the U.S. Army in World War I. He received the Purple Heart Award while serving with the Army Corps of Engineers in France in 1918. Take it away, Leon. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Linda Trujillo Bailey, Gilbert's daughter um, and granddaughter of Teofilo Trujillo. Do you have any memories of the family visiting the Adobe growing up? Um, actually, we visited not too not too long ago. I, I'm going to say about 15 years ago. Approximately. The, I think that was the first time I I ever been to the house. Uh huh. Um, and I've got pictures. Uh huh. Uh, we met with the historical society, and they let us in. Everything was fenced off, but the house was visible from the street. Um, so we were, the back side of the house was gone, but the, there was a roof, and the front side was as you can see in the pictures. Um, we walked in, took, took photos, and it was just interesting to know that there was a school and cantina and our family had lived there. Gilbert, did you have a nickname? Did I? I'm sorry, I didn't hear Did you have a nickname? A nickname. Do I have a nickname? No, I do not. Gil is a bit Gil, okay. Uh, most of us in the area here have nicknames. Um, my, my dad's name was Walter, but his nickname was Big Boy. Um, Corky's, oh, excuse me, see, Darlene's dad was Conrad, but his nickname was Corky. It seemed to be a tradition that was um, common in the family, so that's why I'd asked the question of perhaps. No, you're, you're, you're correct, because we used to attend many of the family picnics here in Riverside, right across the street from La Placita. There was a family by the name of, um, well, as we used to know him as Maruya. Which would he was be a Maria Atia yeah. and his wife uh, Concha. I believe so. His son was Chombe. Chombe. That's, his nickname. that's a nickname. Chombe. That's, you know his real name? That, that's exact. No, I don't. See? Was it? Was it Francisco? It could have been. Could, I don't know why I'm thinking of that, but yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, me either. But yeah. It, it, but we, you're right, Chombe. Yeah. I and I remember it. Chombe. We used to have big barbecues yeah. with the whole family get together, and the women would be making tortillas and. Yeah. And carne asada out in the, in, in the barbecues in the driveway. Well, and, that, and that, was that at, at um, let's see, because Chombe had a place on La Cadena, but then his son, is what his son? Petchy Boy. Petchy Boy. Oh, I remember Petchy Boy. Petchy Boy moved to uh, Northern California, yes. somewhere near the near Nevada border. Yeah. And he is now deceased. I tried calling him. A few years back, and well, now do you remember the the Atencios or the the Pinas that lived um, what is now across the street from um, Springbrook Golf Course? But there were two dirt roads that went back into the land, um, and um, Kiko um, Pena lived back there, and he was brother to my great grandmother Sarah or Cesaria Pena. Okay. Into the Trujillos. Okay, never. I never. No, that one doesn't. I don't recall. But, but Chombe, you know. Okay. Chombe, I know. And Linda, Linda was Maruya, and and 
the Akonchas daughter. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I did, remember those names. So yeah. See, there's all that connection in there. So we do go back. Yeah. Go back a long ways, huh? Chombe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That bring back a lot of memories of the barbecues we used to have, though. Yeah. Tell us about the barbecues. The women would would make those big tortillas. They call them Sonora tortillas. And they'd be, and boy, they were delicious. They were, they were, we had very good times there. And I remember the, in the evening, the, the Maruya and the, and the men would get together and play Conquian. That was a favorite name of a uh, favorite card name, card game that they played. Let's, they'd be playing Conquian and, and that was a good pastime to, to, to put the uh, barbecue away. And then later on they would play penny ante poker. But... Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of what else. Um... So when you were coming to those barbecues, were you living in San Pedro when you were driving in? Uh, no. Uh, we, we, uh, we lived in San Pedro. I was born in San Pedro. We lived there for till I was five years old. And from there we moved to Los Angeles. From Los Angeles, we moved to Monrovia, and then from Monrovia to Azusa, we moved into Azusa right about the start of World War One or World War II, which would have been in December of uh, 41. And I've stayed in Azusa since that time. But Dad, when did you used to go to the barbecues? Well, how old were you when you went to the barbecues? Uh, I was driving, so I must have been about 17 years old at the time, 16 or 17 years old. Did you know the Myers family? The Myers? Byers, no. Any Myers? Myers? Myers, no. 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 Um, Labus? Nope, nope. Because no, they were at some other folks there. And let's see, the Tauruses were there next to the Peñas as well. How about Junie? Oh, Junie, I'm related. Junie and Pitch. That was, that was Linda's, Linda's son. Well, let's see. Uh, okay. Him and Petchy were always together. Him and Petchy boy were always yes, together. Right, and my dad. And they had, they had, there was a dairy across the street yes. from Maruya's house. Yes. And the you kids got me. Dairy. I was a kid from the from the from the city, and these kids were from the the, the, the from, the, from the country boys. And they got they talked me into putting on the gloves in a boxing ring over at the dairy. So I walked over with them. They put on the gloves. And guess who got beat up? Me. <laughs> Boy, the kid, he, he did a number on me. I, I was no more pre These guys used to box all the time for, for sport. And here I was, a city, a city boy, a city slicker, and an coming child. out to the, and the only child coming up to Riverside. <laughs> and I walked into a pair of gloves that... <laughs> I guess I went home crying to Mama, but. Uh, <laughs> did, Gilbert, tell me, did, what, did, what did your father tell you about growing up in La Placita? I mean, anything in particular? Gosh, no. Like I say, uh, if, if I if I'd have known then, I'd, I would have asked questions all over the place. But uh, do you uh, do you remember if your dad ever? Did he have, think of himself as Native American or part Native American? What's the, what's the family story about Native American? My dad, after, uh, he grew up, he grew up a lot, uh, he mentioned High Grove a lot. And I've never been to that city. Uh, okay. That's where I grew up. Okay, right, that's right around the corner. It's just over, over, the, over the hill. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned High Grove and he spent a lot of his time there. And, uh, he used to frequent the city or the area quite a bit, and I'm trying to think of what else he would he would tell me. Oh, oh God! That big rock coming into Riverside, that, that mountain the, that you said Grandpa had something to do with, or put a flag up or something. I, I don't remember. Oh, there was a there's a bridge. I don't know if it's still there. As you come in, if you come into Riverside from 60 or somewhere in that area, in or in Rubidoux. And it's made out of a, a stone. It's an arch, mm -hmm. and it covers, and you go under it. Mm -hmm. I remember my uncle, my dad telling me that my uncle helped build that bridge. Oh, wow. And it's not used today. Right now, you come over the Mission Inn Avenue Bridge, and if you go into the little uh, park that's there, 
and then you'll see that original arch and that bridge right there. Okay, I'll be darned. I'll drive you there. I'll be darned. Memories, huh? Yeah, I just wish I had more like like Alex here. <laughs> ah, damn. Oh, Alex here. I, I thought I thought of the person where I heard your name from, Clarence Trujillo. Oh, Clar Clarence. It doesn't ring a bell with me at all. Okay, it's a. I forgot the rest, but he was lived up in Washington State. Oh, okay. Back in the 90s. Oh, okay. And he was in touch with Flora Ruiz, and he. So, yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, he, 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 I, we, we, we corresponded. That's before the internet. That's <laughs> <laughs> we did it the old-fashioned way by the post office. But he, he had all these very vivid memories, and he was still in touch with his Pena and Baca mm -hmm. cousins mm -hmm. who, throughout the state of California. Oh, I know what I meant to tell you too. My dad, after after World War One. He came back, he, got, he received the Purple Heart, came back, met my, my mother, Florencia Trujillo. Gomez. They married and had one child. They saw me and they figured that would be it. Yeah. No, they weren't going to make But uh, Dad worked for the railroad. He was um, I, in the Army. He was in the Army Corps of Engineers. And I remember him telling me stories about being in France where they would be building bridges, build a bridge to cross the river into France or Germany, wherever they were at. Yeah. And the, um, they would fake building another bridge down here because the Germans would be bombing this bridge and they would be building down here to, to cross. So little, little, little things like that. That's when he told me stories about having bivouacked in the uh, uh, Joan of Arc's castle in France. And if I'd have known then, now what I know then, I'd have, I'd have kept questioning him all night long. But at that time, ah, eh, so what, Joan of Arc, who was that? And now, just this little bit of history that, uh, that you go by. And he was, um, after he came back, he worked for the Pacific Electric Railroad. He was, uh, he was an electrical mechanic. And he stayed with them for a long time. He retired as assistant passenger director for the Pacific Electric Railway. Wow. And I remember working, we, we, I had a pass, I'd go to Azusa, to LA, to go to the show or go to the theater by myself or go visit my uncle and aunt in, uh, in Riverside, in uh, San Pedro. And I had a pass. So all I had to do was show my pass, get on the streetcar and, and travel up and down. We went, we went, uh, We'd go down to Mexico to see my great grandmother or my grandmother, and uh, we'd go Pullman, first class. Uh, so I, I was spoiled at an early age because uh, I got to do these things that most of the kids didn't do. I remember eating in the dining car, white, white linen <laughs> cloths, and having bacon and pancakes and, and milk or whatever. It was it was it was something for me. I and those memories are still with me. Things that not too not too many kids could experience at that at that time. But that, that was that was my my dad. Yeah, he was he was quite a guy. He, he thought he thought a lot of uh, his family. And he try, I guess he kept trying to tell me about the Trujillos, but being the young man that I was, I I just had other interests in mind. Yeah. And now I'm sorry, but it's too late. I think all of us at some time will agree that there's questions that we could have asked our parents that we didn't, and they're gone. <laughs>